morning. Thanks for joining me for Children's Church. So today we're going to be talking about the word worship. Do you know what the word worship means? It's a word that means to give adoration to or to honor. Um, so we ideally should only worship God, but we've talked about before, there's other things that people worship. It might be, we don't really see people worshiping idols anymore, <laughs> things carved out of stone or rock or wood, but we do see people worshiping things like their job or money or maybe even the latest video game sometimes. So these are all things that we can worship. But my first question for you today is, can you think of a time that you chose to do the right thing even though you didn't feel like it? We kind of talked about this last week with Jonah, right? Jonah did not feel like doing what God told him to do, so I ran in the opposite direction. It didn't turn out super well for him. Today we're going to be talking about someone who chose to do the right thing even when it really cost them, even when it was really difficult for them. Can you think of some people in the Bible who worshipped God no matter what? Well, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about Job, right? How everything went wrong. God, he had everything taken away from him. He was covered in sores. His life left him. His friends were telling him all the things he did wrong, but he still worshiped God. He still believed that God was in control. We've also talked about the prophet Elijah, who was on the run from King Ahab and his queen Jezebel, and how he felt all alone, but he still worshiped God. He stayed true to God. Um, like I said, we're going to talk about some other people who worshiped God today, even what uh, it cost them. So if you don't have a Bible, go ahead and pause the video and go ahead and get your Bible. We're going to be in Daniel 3 today. And I'm sure as we read, you're going to be like, wait a minute, I know this story. So you ready? All right. So we're going to start in Daniel 3. Verse 1, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its breadth 6 cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent to gather the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces gathered for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast in to the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, as soon as all the people heard the sound of the hornpipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. They declared to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar answered them and said, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up? Now if you're ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, to fall down and worship the image that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this manner. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and will, he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you've set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury, and the expression on his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was usually heated, and he ordered some of the mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, their hats, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the burning fiery furnace. Because the king's order was urgent and the furnace overheated, the flame of the fire killed the men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning fiery furnace. 
Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. He answered, But I see four men unbound walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. The appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the burning fire furnace. He declared, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. And the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed, their cloaks were not harmed, and no smell of fire had come upon them. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him and set aside the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree. Any people, nation, or language that speaks anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, or Abednego shall be torn limb from limb and their houses laid in ruins. For there is no God who is able to rescue in this way. So what do we learn from this story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? We learn very quickly. The first thing that it says is King Nebuchadnezzar got this idea to build this huge statue. And um, it doesn't... the. Bible doesn't tell specifically what it's a statue of. A lot of scholars assume it's a statue of himself. And he wanted all the people to worship it. So, and he says right away, you know, if you don't do this, you're going to be thrown into a furnace. You're going to be thrown into a fire. So even knowing that, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't worship the idol. They didn't fall down and do it. So even though they knew they were going to die, they still chose to follow God and worship only God, even though it would have been easier for them and it would have protected their own lives for them to just go along with it and be like, you know what, we'd rather not die in the fire, so we're just going to worship this. What do we learn about God from this story? Well, we learn that God, we've talked about this before, God is a rescuer. God um, saved Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and even though the furnace was so hot, the men who threw them in and didn't even go into the furnace died from how hot the furnace was. God protected these three men. And it says when they came out, it talks about in the last couple of t- verses here, they didn't even smell like fire. Their hair wasn't singed off. You couldn't even tell they'd been in a furnace. So then what happened because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego worshipped only God? What, what's the outcome of this story? Well, in the last two verses, we learn not only did God save them and protect them, God used what they did by worshiping only him to turn King Nebuchadnezzar to also worship God, right? In these last two verses, it talks about any person who says anything against their God shall be torn limb from limb and their houses laid in ruin, for there is no God who is able to rescue in this way which is pretty incredible. Here you have this very prideful king who had created a a statue of himself that he wanted worshipped. And by the end of this story, he's changed totally from wanting to be worshipped himself to saying, no, everyone needs to worship the God of these three men. Because he recognizes that he doesn't have the power to save men from a fiery furnace, but their God does. So God used these three men and their commitment to worship and honor only him to change the heart of a king and a whole nation. What are some situations where you might have to choose to worship God no matter what happens? You know, we've obviously been stuck at home for a while now, right? It's probably, at this point, it's been over two months. And it's been hard, right? And some ways, it's it's good. It's nice to not have to go to school and get up and get on the bus every day. But it's kind of boring and you can't do the things you want to do. You might not be able to see your friends or go to the playground or do the things you usually do. So we have a decision when we're faced with something. This obviously isn't, we're not going to be thrown into a fiery furnace, but it's uncomfortable. It's not ideal for us. So what do we choose to do? Do we choose to whine and complain and be like, wow, I just really am having a hard time right now and I wish everything was different. And sometimes we can feel that way, but we should choose like Job and like Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego to worship God no matter what, even though it's hard even though things aren't the way we'd like them to be right now, we still, is God still worthy of being praised? Is he still worthy of honor? Is he still the creator that created the earth, the rescuer who sent his son to save us from our sins? Yes. And because of that, we should worship him, even though it's hard. And even though we're not sure why this is happening right now. So our memory verse for this week is from Luke 4, verse 8. And it says, and Jesus answered him, it is written, 
You shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. So we shouldn't be serving our own desires, our own wants, but we should serve God because he is our rescuer, our creator, and our savior. Let's pray and thank him today. Heavenly Father, we praise you for how you're in total control even when things are difficult, when things aren't going the way we've planned. We thank you for your word, which tells us the stories of these men and women that worshiped you no matter what and how you protected them and how you worked in their lives. I pray that you'd help us be able to see how you're still working in our lives even when things are hard. Thank you for sending Jesus to rescue you and to rescue us so that we didn't have to be separated from you because of our sin, that we could have a relationship with you. We praise you and we know you are the only God worthy of our worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you next week.